I want to read an excerpt from St. Augustine's Nativity of Our Lord. This is one of the greatest sermons ever written, so while I may be reading it, take my word for it, it's one of the greatest sermons ever written. Truth has arisen from the earth, and justice has looked down from heaven. Awake, mankind, for your sake, God has become man. Awake, you who sleep, rise up from the dead, and Christ will enlighten you. I tell you again, for your sake, God became man. You would have suffered eternal death had he not been born in time. Never would you have been freed from sinful flesh had he not taken upon himself the likeness of sinful flesh. You would have suffered everlasting unhappiness had it not been for this mercy. You would have never returned to life had he not shared your death. You would, not, or you would have been lost if he had not hastened to your aid. You would have perished had he not come. Let us then joyfully celebrate the coming of our salvation, the redemption. Let us celebrate the festive day upon which he who is great, an eternal day, came from the great and endless day of eternity into our own short day of time. He has become our justice, our sanctification, our redemption, our redemption so that as it is written, let him who glorifies glory in the Lord. Truth then has arisen from the earth. Christ who said, I am the truth, was born of the virgin. And justice looked down from heaven because by believing in this newborn child, man is justified not by himself, but by God. Truth has arisen from the earth because the word was made flesh and justice looked down from heaven because every good gift and every perfect gift is from above. Truth has arisen from the earth, the flesh of St. Mary, and justice looked down from heaven. For man can receive nothing unless it has been given to him from heaven. Justi justified by faith, let us be at peace with God. For justice and peace have embraced one another through our Lord Jesus Christ. For truth has arisen from the earth through whom we have access to that grace in which we stand and our boast is in our hope of God's glory. He does not say of our glory, but of, the, but of God's glory. For justice has not come out of us, but has looked down from heaven. Therefore, he who glories, let him glory not in, in himself, but in the Lord. For this reason, when the Lord was born of the virgin, the message of the angelic voices, glory to God in the highest, and peace to men of good will. For how could there be peace on earth unless truth has arisen from the earth? That is, unless Christ were born of our flesh. And he is our peace, who made the two into one, that we might be men of good will, sweetly linked by the bond of unity. Let us then rejoice in this grace, so that our glory may bear witness to our good conscience, by which we glory, not in ourselves, but in the Lord. That is why scripture says, he is my glory, the one who lifts up my head. For what greater grace could God have made to draw on us than to make his only son become the son of man so that the son of man might be turned to become the son of God. Ask if this were merited. Ask if it's the reason for its justification and see whether you will find any other answer but sure and undulterated grace.
Our hymn this morning and today, the chief hymn, there's one text. I'll be bringing more text out of it as we go through the Sundays. But in this text, 334, in case you want to see it, there's one stanza in particular that I want to draw your attention. I'll give you a second if you're going to turn to page 334. If you're not, I will just wait until you do. I'm going to look at the context before stanza four, which is stanza three, because it points to our fragileness and our neediness and the fact that without Christ, we have nothing. We are nothing. We are injustice. We are completely and totally found guilty. In fact, the only incense that we burn is that in which the is that is that in which Satan himself finds beautiful. Our incense, the incense that we let off in the world, is more likened to that of dung than of anything that might that the Lord may find attractive. So we know that where the king of flies is, so shall we be outside of Christ. So with that being said, stanza three says, I lay in fetters groaning. You came to set me free. I stood my shame bemoaning. You came to honor me. A glorious crown you gave me, a treasure safe on high. That will not fail or leave me as earthly riches fly. This is the one that I, that I really want to focus on because when we think about the Incarnation, when we think about Advent, Advent, when we think about Christmas, we don't think about it in exactly in, in this way. Christ not only yearned to save us, but He also came down in the Incarnation because He is love. I don't think that we look at Christ as love enough. Christ is love, but he's, he's the noun of love, but He is also the verb of love. Which means, where Christ loves, there Christ is. Where Christ loves, He has to be. By the very laws in which He wrote of nature, He has to be where He loves. And where He is not, no love can be found. Therefore, when we talk about love of God, of God we find Christ not to labor the point but where Christ is there is love therefore if Christ loves you there is Christ where there is Christ God the Father God the Father knows that love and brings you into himself but I think that Paul Gerhardt who by the way is the greatest hymn writer to ever live much better than Martin Luther. And his words when mixed with Johann Sebastian Bach, I believe is what the angels sing in heaven. He writes this, love is what caused your incarnation. Love is what, he, is what made him take on flesh. Love is what made him come down to earth. To use the words in which he wrote, love calls your incarnation, love brought you down to me. Christ thirst for our salvation and procured our liberty. O oh, love beyond all telling that led you to embrace, in love all love excelling our lost and fallen race. In this life, in bad times in particular, we often find no good in ourselves. 
We can think of all kinds of monikers that we lay upon ourselves when we feel horrible about ourselves, when all of the world has railed against us, when even our thoughts are soaked in sin, when things that we do not look that we do not look forward to end up hurrying on our way when we look at ourselves as the lowest beings when circumstances cripple and destroy us when we are close to death when we hope to God that our next breath would be our last as to rescue us from this world. Remember this. Christ loves you. And where Christ loves, there He is. And where He is, salvation must follow. Amen.